Can Dragonfly Season 4 save raiding? Does raiding even need saving? Stay tuned to find out. With the mysterious pirate patch due to go live very soon now and a promise that the PTR for Season 4 will follow shortly after, I thought it'd be fun to take a look at what I'd personally like to see Blizzard try out in Season 4. I'll probably be completely wrong about all this and if you're watching this after Season 4 has been announced, do feel free to point out and laugh at my wrongness in the comments. Go on, you know you want to. Let's get started with diving into raiding. Now personally I didn't find the raiding back in Shadowlands Season 4 to be very interesting. I did one run of each in normal for the mount and I just left it at that. Honestly, redoing the same raids that I've recently spent months in just doesn't excite me and I do hope that Blizzard can offer us something a little bit better this time around. Mythic Plus, on the other hand, was far more interesting thanks to the experimental introduction of a bunch of older dungeons into the M Plus pool. Dragonflight Season 3 has turned out to be, in my view, the best Mythic Plus season we've ever had and that is at least in part thanks to the successful continuation of that experiment into Dragonflight and hopefully this is something they do plan to continue on with. This success has, in my view, resulted in Mythic Plus feeling well ahead of raiding, especially at the higher end in terms of player engagement and right now I feel that if raiding is to continue as the pinnacle of PvE content through the World Soul saga, it's in need of a bit of innovation from the team. And what better time to experiment than in Season 4 when the stakes are a lot lower if that experiment doesn't go well. So what do I think Blizzard should do? Personally, I think there's actually a few issues with Raiden at the moment, but the biggest is that the gap between Heroic Raiden and Mythic Raiden is, in my opinion, currently far too wide. As well as making it harder for people to progress up to Mythic Raiden, it's also creating a situation where for many players, while Mythic isn't viable for them, Heroic just feels too easy. And this is leaving them increasingly unsatisfied with their overall raiding experience. Small wonder then that for most mainstream players, Mythic Plus ends up being the primary source of player power progression, even for many enthusiastic raiders. But what's the cause of this wide gap? Well, not only do you have the increased mechanical difficulty, you also have a massive increase in organisational difficulty. Mythic Raiden's fixed size of 20 man forces guilds to build rosters of 23 to 25 people and requires the use of a bench. And for many casual teams, the constant existential pressure that if enough people don't turn up for raid night, well, you don't raid. Sure, you can pug, but the region restrictions we have even make that very hard to pull off. Small wonder then that so many Mythic Raid teams end up treating it like a job, requiring application forms and all that other unfun stuff that comes in from IRL. And then what happens? They eventually end up disbanding after an expansion or so when the effort just becomes too much for the officers. When even guilds in the top five, such as PCs and now BDGG, are falling over, you know there has to be a problem. That 20 man fixed size is a powerful tool that enables Blizzard to more tightly tune the raid difficulty and that is probably essential for the current very top end in Race to World First. But that just creates a vibe that they're building the mythic race around the Race to World First and that, in my opinion, is harmful for the game as a whole and I feel that perhaps it's time to aim at the wider higher end player base rather than the absolute top end and Race to World First. So my idea is for an experiment to open up the current raids at Mythic difficulty for a flex 10 to 20 man teams. This will require some retuning and probably mechanics changes, but those I think are likely to be beneficial for that more mainstream audience. The only problem with testing this in Season 4 is that it will probably have less baseline participation. Realistically, I know a fair amount of players are already planning to give Season 4 a skip, and that's particularly the case at the higher end. But I do nevertheless think that there is value in getting some kind of read in what a world where Mythic was a flex raid looks like for the game. Now this experiment doesn't mean they have to go straight into flex Mythic as the only game in town for the war within. That wide gap between Heroic and Mythic does create space for them to add another difficulty into the game. So how about in the War Within, if this experiment works out, we got a new Mythic Flex difficulty that stands between Heroic and Fixed Size Mythic. Obviously, there are some design challenges, like how gearing is managed. Do we really want another 13 item level gear step in there? Probably not. And lockouts, you know, 
if they have the same gear, what happens there. But with how much the very top end and even race to world first players are complaining about the current status quo, I personally think that no changes is no longer an option for raiding if it is to survive as it is in the very long term. A very easy option around this would be to give the same gear for fixed and flexed and perhaps a shared gear but not boss fight lockout and then just let the 20 man fixed size raiding be an elite because it's their challenge. After all, there's plenty of folks who do mythic 25 as and above even though they get the same rewards as you would get for a 20 and with that mythic plus is doing super well. So I do think there is enough desire for from people to do those challenges that they don't necessarily need the type of rewards that more plain mainstream players I think do need at our level to get us interested in the content. Well that's a big idea for raiding but what about Mythic Plus? While Season 3 has been the best Mythic Plus season yet there is one fly in the ointment that holds it back from being the best it can possibly be. For myself, and I suspect the majority of players in Mythic Plus, the worst part of it is currently the affix system. As somebody who by midway through the season does maybe 4 to 18 keys for the vault each week, I consider myself to be a pretty mainstream player. And I have yet to go into any Mythic Plus key, encounter an affix and then say, hell yeah, that was great. Instead, every week I look at the affixes and I say to myself, what miserable rubbish have we got this week? Part of the issue is that the affixes aren't designed around the dungeon itself. As well as that causing some very bad interactions at times, it severely limits the design space for the affixes that the dev team have to work with. The end result is that generally they just end up being something that makes the experience harder and less fun in a very generic way. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, the enjoyment of difficulty comes from overcoming an interesting challenge. And affixes just don't offer any challenge, so you only ever get the downsides with none of the upsides. I know the theory that they add flavour and variety, and I'm sure at the high end bleeding edge type keys, they do force you to change your play, but at my level, they really just don't change anything other than the odd talent, and, and therefore, they just really don't give me any sort of satisfaction or enjoyment at all. Sure, the rest of the Mythic Plus experience is good enough that I can put up with affixes, but do you really want a core game mechanics defining feature to be, we can put up with it? It's really hard for me to believe that the game designers think that that's a positive attitude for players to have about part of their game. So my simple idea is this, let's just do away with them for a season and see how it all feels. We can keep Tyrannico and Fortified if needs be, but otherwise, you know, we can just tweak the baseline difficulty up a little to compensate for the loss of the affixes. If it does work out though, what then for the War Within? Well, Blizzard have in the past included mechanics and dungeons that rotate on a weekly basis, such as Waycrest Manor's door rotation in BFA or the rotation of Witches that's in the current version of Waycrest in Season 3. Such rotations can then be designed into the overall experience of the dungeons, widening the design space for the developers, and if done well, will present those challenges to us as a players that will lead to a much more satisfying experience all round. While this is likely to be more effort for the developers, I do feel that the payoff in terms of continuing to grow player participation and retention in what is becoming an ever more important pillar of the game will make that effort very well worth it for Blizzard. Well that's two of the four pillars done. Now I'm not going to cover PvP here as I don't PvP and I'm honestly just not qualified to talk about it at all. I will say sorry to any PvP players out there, I know you are feeling pretty neglected at the moment. But what's this four pillars nonsense? Well, the fourth pillar is of course world content. In Shadowlands Season 4, world content got absolutely nothing. I had at the time at least expected we'd see an item level bump, but instead it just seemed to get completely forgotten. Something that game designer Ian Kazikosis did express regret on in some of the Dragonflight interviews. In the roadmap, we are told there will be changes to world content gear in Dragonflight Season 4. The logical expectation is that it'll just be a simple item level bump. 
I do expect that that is what is going to happen, but in my opinion, that's not very interesting, even if it is welcome. I would like to see the team do a little bit more to shake up world content and yes, do some experimentation there too. I can be a fate, which in my opinion had the best basic open world only gear progression that the game has ever seen. Open world players who were willing to dip into group content now and then could get a heroic piece of gear from the Warfronts about once every three weeks or so. Now let's face it, Warfronts, even in the heroic version, were as easy as a starting zone quest, so that heroic gear was coming from substantially easier content than the heroic raid. And you know what? Given world content players, heroic gear from easy content did not result in any of the bad things that people bring up whenever the idea of giving better gear for open world content comes up. People didn't stop heroic raiding in BFA, in fact I'm pretty sure it was more popular then than it is currently in fact, nor did it destroy Mythic Plus. In fact, at the time, nobody even complained about that gear being available. And let's not forget that in the final season of BFA, you could get mythic level gear from the solo horrific visions. And even with that, the game didn't die then either. So here's my idea. Let's just take the gloves off a bit and power wise in season four, with it likely being a much shorter than normal season, I'm, I'm betting in as little as a three months before the pre-patch from when season four launches, there is scope to have a much faster gear acquisition curve in general, with maybe uncapped crests and a faster drop rate, not just for open world, but also for raid and mythic plus too. At the same time, let's allow open world players to get one token, we can call it a dinar if you like, that allows them to buy one champion level item a week and also provide them with a source of enough worms crests to upgrade an item by two slots. This would allow open world contents to get to mid heroic level gearing, albeit at a slower place than the other pillars. We can easily avoid making this mandatory for Raid and Mythic Plus players by allowing Raid and Mythic Plus to be a valid source for the weekly DNR2, which could then be combined perhaps with another currency from the Mythic Raid or Mythic Plus 16s and above to enable access to better weapons and trinkets from that vendor too for the higher end players. So that's my thoughts on what I'd like to see in Season 4. Honestly, I was very disappointed to see the devs decide not to have a full 10.3.0 in an expansion where they have clearly been able to keep up the pace of delivery. But if we're not about to get any fresh new content, then I'd at least like to see the time being used by the devs to take some risks that have the potential to meaningfully improve the game as we go into the World Soul Saga. But what do you think? What kind of things would you like to see Blizzard try out in Season 4? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're a PvP player, I'd also love to hear more about what you think is needed to revitalize PvP. If you found this video interesting, do please hit that like icon. This tells both me and YouTube that this is the kind of video that you want to see more of. I will be back with more news, reviews and many, many opinions real soon now. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified when my next video goes live. That's all for now and I will see you all again soon.